This is the story of how our understanding of really small things has changed and how it has changed us in a really big way. Many ancient philosophers wondered what would happen if you kept slicing something in half over and over again. Could you keep going forever? Or would you get down to something could, that could not be broken down any further? In ancient Greece, Democritus used the word a tomos, meaning unbreakable, to describe what he believed were the smallest bits of matter. Aristotle believed that there were four basic types of elements from which all other things were made, air, fire, water and earth. Even in ancient times, many substances were found to be basic and could not be broken down into simpler building blocks. These elements included carbon, sulphur, gold, silver, copper, iron, tin, lead and mercury. Ancient Egyptian and Roman artefacts show skillful use of many of these elements. Between those ancient times, while much of Europe went through the Dark Ages, many alchemists, mainly from the Arab world, began to experiment and slowly transformed our understanding of, into a more scientific approach called chemistry. In 1661, a scientist named Boyle came up with the idea that all matter is made up of particles in motion. Chemical and physical changes are caused by collisions between particles, and that chemists can experiment and discover that chemical elements are not the classic core believed by the ancient Greeks. In cold solids, particles are tightly packed and move only very slowly. In warmer liquids, they move faster and are more spread out and can flow past each other. In hot gases, they move so fast that they spread out equally in all directions. In 1750, a scientist named Black discovered that when limestone is heated or treated with acid, it yields carbon dioxide. This was called fixed air. It's denser than air and doesn't support flame or animal life. Carbon dioxide is a molecule of one carbon and two oxygen atoms. It's a byproduct of burning or combustion and in many industrial processes and its release into the atmosphere has increased exponentially since the industrial revolution. Its ability to suffocate fires makes it a useful substance for fire extinguishers. In 1766, a scientist named Cavendish discovered that when acids are dripped onto metals, a gas is given off called hydrogen. This was called flammable air. It was found to produce water when burned. Hydrogen is the simplest and most abundant chemical element in the universe. Some people still fear its use as a fuel due to a misunderstanding of its involvement in the Hindenburg airship disaster. It's a clean fuel whose only byproduct is water and it is seen by many as a desirable alternative to petrol. In 1774, a scientist named Priestley discovered that when sunlight is focused on a mineral called mercuric oxide, Inside a glass tube, a gas is given off. This is called fire air. It supports combustion and respiration. Oxygen in the air is breathed in and used to break down chemicals, releasing energy in our bodies. It's needed for fire, and during combustion, oxygen is added to the fuel that burns, releasing energy as heat. All of these discoveries have been made without any clear idea or evidence of what an atom might be. In 1804, a scientist named Dalton came up with the idea that compounds are formed from elements in constant proportions, and matter is not created or destroyed in chemical reactions, only rearranged. This suggests that elements are made up of chemical building blocks called atoms, all of the same type, while compounds are combinations of different types of atoms. Dalton came up with his own symbols for many types of atomic elements and described ways in which the elements might combine to form compounds such as oxygen and hydrogen combining to form water molecules. In 1828, a scientist named Waller discovered that chemical compounds such as urea that are normally only found in living things can be created out of simple non-organic chemicals. They can be used to create more complex chemicals or to convert different types of organic chemicals for different uses. Many organic molecules are complex combinations of simpler molecules and make up many of the important chemicals in living things, including proteins, carbohydrates and even DNA. They include chemical chains, rings, spirals and more. 
In 1869, a scientist named Mendeleev came up with the idea that when elements are arranged into a table with those with similar properties in columns and with increasing atomic mass in rows, several patterns can be seen that enhance our understanding of chemistry. Most of the known elements are shiny, conductive, solid metals that are found from the left of the periodic table. On the right of the periodic table are the coloured, insulating, gassy non-metals. Toward the bottom of the periodic table are the heavy radioactive elements. Many of these can only be made artificially. In 1897, scientists named Thompson discovered that when a metal plate is heated and electrified in just the right way, a beam called a cathode ray is emitted. This ray can be shown to be made up of very tiny negatively charged particles called electrons. Electrons shooting out of the heated metal in the glass tube make the phosphor on the glass glow green. This is the same technology behind the early TVs and the flow of electrons in electricity is used to power many appliances. The friction in, of clouds moving through the atmosphere pulls electrons out of the air and the earth and they build up in the clouds. When the negative charge builds up, lightning strikes as the electrons rapidly return to earth. In 1911, a scientist named Rutherford discovered that firing tiny positively charged alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold showed that most of them passed straight through. A few were deflected and only very few reflected, suggesting that the atoms are mostly made up of empty space with a nucleus at the centre containing positively charged protons. If an atom was the size of a football field, then the nucleus would be the size of a marble at its centre. The positive charge of the protons in the nucleus attracts the tiny negatively charged electrons around it. In 1913, a scientist named Bohr noticed that when electrons move, they emit electromagnetic radiation, or light. But electrons, orbiting atoms, only emit a few specific frequencies or colours of light, suggesting that electrons orbit in shells of specific energy levels. Electrons in, in, in atoms tend to exist only in very specific energy levels, visualised as orbiting rings or shells around the nucleus. When light of a specific colour is absorbed by an atom, an electron takes that energy and moves away from the nucleus. Eventually, the electron moves back towards the nucleus and releases energy as light of a specific colour emitted from the atom. The number of electrons that are found in the outermost shell of a nucleus affects how it reacts with other chemicals and other atoms. In 1932, a scientist named Chadwick noticed that the mass of different atoms increases by more than the increase in positive charge, and that some atoms of the same type actually weigh slightly different amounts due to the different number of neutral but heavy particles in the nucleus called neutrons. Different versions of an element, like hydrogen, all have the same number of protons but can have different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. When the forces holding a nucleus together are weaker than the forces keeping the protons and neutrons apart, the whole nucleus can break apart and the atom becomes radioactive. All stars work in the opposite direction, combining simpler atoms into more and more complex atoms releasing radioactive particles as they go. There are many other complex ideas about the structure of atoms that have been developed to describe and explain the results of experiments throughout the last century, and our scientific understanding continues to change as new evidence comes to light. Here we can see the gradual changes that have been made to our scientific understanding of the atom over time, from the unknown reasons for the existence of elements to the introduction of the idea of the atom, the discovery of negatively charged electrons, the heavy, positively charged protons in the tiny nucleus, the electrons orbiting the electron shells, and the discovery of uncharged heavy neutrons in the nucleus, radioactivity, and more. In summary, atoms are the smallest form of matter that can be chemically broken down. Atoms make up all matter, 
and are in turn made up of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons in orbital shells. Protons are positively charged and heavy particles in the nucleus of all atoms. The number of protons determines the atomic number of an atom and therefore what element the atom is. It also determines how many electrons the atom would normally have. Electrons are negatively charged and light particles that orbit the nucleus of atoms in electron shells. Electrons can be gained and lost by an atom or shared and swapped between atoms forming bonds between them. The number of electrons in the outer shell of an atom determines its chemical properties, how it reacts with other atoms. Neutrons are uncharged heavy particles in the nucleus of all atoms. They help determine the mass of an atom. All atoms, except some types of hydrogen, have neutrons. If the number of protons and neutrons is unbalanced for the size of the nucleus, the atom can become radioactive and break down and split into atoms of different types of elements. Elements, atoms, electrons, protons, shells, neutrons. This has been the story of how small things can make a big difference.